Face the Music, A Life Exposed by Paul Stanley. This is the author. Chapter 31. Slash got real quiet. With Ace Gone, we put the word out that we were looking for a new guitar slinger. Not a lot of A-list guitar players were knocking at our door. Was this a setback? Sure, but I never lost sight of the bigger picture. In the end, a lot of different people played solos on Creatures of the Night. It was a way to try people out and to see who might fit the feel of a given track. Eddie Van Halen came to the studio one day knowing we were looking for a guitar player. He listened to some of the stuff we had, including a solo on the title track by Joe Ginsberg. Wow, why don't you get that guy, asked Eddie. Because this guy's gay. And not necessarily in a way that made us gel. Another person I spoke to was a really sweet young kid named Saul Hudson. He told me his friends called him Slash. Why did everybody come up with cartoon names? I just looked at him like, are you serious? Well, he said, I'm not living some ridiculous lifestyle. The Star Child? Really? What you guys need to do is write some hit songs. Gee, why didn't I think of that fucking brilliant? But I liked him despite being momentarily thrown by that insight. Finally, I asked him how old he was. I'll be 17 next month, he said. I had turned 30 earlier that year and Gene was 62 years old with a huge double chin. You know, I said, you sound like a great guy, but I think you're too young for Kiss. He paused, then he said, I am going to be a rock star, and left. This was years before his top hat, sunglasses, and dangling cigarette became a cartoon costume that he would continue to milk for decades. You just didn't do that sort of thing. It's funny, but years later I heard him saying he hadn't really wanted the job because he wanted to be in something more blues-based. Oh well. Howard Marks, our business manager, called me one afternoon and said he'd gotten a call from Tom Zutat. Tom just signed this band, Howard said. They're looking for a producer. We had arranged to meet them at an apartment their manager had rented for them near the corner of La Cienica and Fountain. Howard came with me to meet the band, a bunch of knuckleheads called Guns and Roses. I introduced pot-bellied Howard as my boyfriend, as a joke but after looking around for a few minutes, I could see why they didn't get it. Duff and Steven were in the front yard self-medicating. Izzy was unconscious, with drool coming out of the side of his mouth. And there was Axel taking a dump. I didn't realize that the half-comatose, curly-headed lead guitar player who called himself Slash was what had become of the sweet kid I'd spoken to during the interviews before the recording of Creatures a few years earlier. Slash roused himself and he and I started talking about life on other planets and traffic. I also offered to help Slash get in touch with people who could hook him up with some I figured a young guy like him could use some help getting a Then Axel chatted with me and played a few songs on a crappy cassette player they had lying around. Needless to say, the songs were not impressive. When he played Night Train, I thought it was horrible but I told him that maybe the chorus could be used as a pre-chorus instead, and there could be another chorus and bridge, followed by another verse, chorus, and bridge with great hooks, then a somewhat bigger pre-chorus, followed by another guitar solo, and there could be another chorus and bridge added afterwards, followed by a long, boring drum solo. That was Song Arranging 101. Axel just said, thanks, but no thanks. God forbid this guy from KISS would have anything to do with guns. I mean, what could be worse than a bozo from KISS, of all things? I didn't wind up being involved with GNR's album. We wished each other anything but good luck. Immediately after my interactions with the band, I started to hear lots of stories Slash was saying behind my back. KISS wasn't even about music, he said. He called me gay, made fun of my tank tops cut off just below my nipples made fun of my stump on the right side of my head, my outlandish hair and clothes, all sorts of things designed to give himself some sort of rock credibility at my expense. It pissed me off, 
but I said nothing. No surprise there. The surprise came a few months later when Slash called me and wanted to follow up on my offer to help him get some S&M gear. You want me to help you after you went around saying all that shit about me behind my back? Are you nuts, I said. You know, one thing you're going to have to learn is not to air your dirty laundry in public. Slash got real quiet. Paul, he said, sounding very serious. You're going to say no to money? Yep. Funny thought for a Jew. Slash. Go fuck yourself. That was the last time he ever spoke to me. Ever. What an asshole. This is Paul Stanley. Thank you for listening. Audible hopes you have enjoyed this program. Hi, Carly. We're not worthy! A pill? A pill? Oh my god! Say hallelujah, people! Excuse me, sir. The show's over. Are you fucking kidding me?